All right, thanks everyone for joining us. My name is Joelle Shea, and on behalf of the entire GeoDecisions and Gannett Fleming team, we're excited that you chose to spend an hour with us today. We've got a fantastic presentation in store for you, but safety first. Safety is an important part of our culture at Gannett Fleming and GeoDecisions. As you can see, we even have a slogan, safety is in our hands, and it's customary we start our meetings with a quick safety moment. Given the time of year, let's talk about safety when grilling. Only use your grill outside. Keep it at least three feet away from siding, deck rails, eaves, and keep a three foot zone around the grill while you're using it to keep kids and pets safe. Open your gas grill before lighting it. Keep an eye on your grill, fire pit, or patio torches. Don't walk away from them when they're lit. And clean the grill after each use. This will remove grease that can start a fire. And finally, visit the U.S. Fire Administration's website for more safety information on this topic. That's www.usfa.fema.gov. All right, now on to today's presentation. Lifelong learning is another core value for us at GeoDecisions and Gannett Fleming. So when COVID-19 hit and industry professionals were left wondering how they were going to replace the learning that they typically receive at conferences, we jumped at the chance to help by creating this webinar series. And now we're on our 13th event. Today's topic is improve your transportation organization with the geospatial maturity model assessment. Let's get to know our speakers a bit before we get started. First up is Eric Abrams. Eric helps GeoDecisions customers leverage and implement spatial technology, including data collection and analysis. He brings 30 years of DOT experience through his work as Iowa DOT's Geographic Information Officer, or GIO, and its Information Technology Specialist. Eric designed and developed Iowa DOT's initial automatic vehicle location system, along with nationally known products like Track a Plow. Eric also advocated and implemented open data concepts. Through his work as GIO, Eric and his team developed databases, processes, and web services to integrate data like digital message signs, pavement conditions, bridge locations, NEPA layers, traffic counters, and cameras within Iowa DOT's enterprise systems. And in his free time, Eric has been running the scoreboard at Iowa State University football games since 1998. Next up is Mark Sarmiento. Mark is a GIS planning specialist at the Federal Highway Administration in Washington, D.C., with 25 years of experience helping FHWA and other transportation agencies become more effective in using GIS. For 10 years, he has concentrated on providing capacity building resources through case study reports, peer exchanges, webinars, and newsletters that highlight the noteworthy efforts of transportation agencies in applying GIS and using geospatial data. And Mark has run nearly 20 marathons over the last 10 years and even completed one ultra marathon. So I'm sure being stuck at home has really been fun for him <laughs> when he's used to being out there. <laughs> and last but not least, of course, we have Paul Giroux. Paul spent most of his career in web and enterprise GIS development, architecture and administration in municipal IT and public works. Like many of you, he was struggling to create a sense of urgency and awareness with leadership about the exponential growth of technology, the true value of location data, and the importance of enterprise platforms as enablers of business transformation. His work on his work, his work is shared, easy for me to say, his work is shared on Creative Commons as Slim Jim. Paul has been able to share and improve his approach to developing maturity-driven strategy through peer collaboration with organizations at local, county, regional, state, and federal levels. The ongoing use of his model and methods by other leaders continues to fuel his desire to make a positive impact on the industry. Paul currently leads innovation and business and location intelligence at the local hydro utility. And on a personal note, Paul lives in the city where the sitcom Letterkenny is filmed, but to this day, he has yet to watch a single episode. <laughs> All right, I know we're ready for takeoff, but we have two more pre-flight announcements before we can get started. First, we know many of you are joining to earn a PDH or a GISP credit. In accordance with regulations, you must stay on the line for at least 50, five zero minutes. And please type your questions into the Q&A section of the, web, of the WebEx, not the chat or the private message, but the Q&A section. The speakers will address them 
together at the end of our presentation. And with that, I will hand it over to Eric. Great, thanks a lot. So thanks for that introduction. This should hopefully be a really um, educational and, and not just educational, but fun time for everybody. Listen to the, to the three of us talk about um, maturity models. So I'm gonna get started, um, talk about, you know, what is a maturity model? And so, you know, as a person you mature, right? So on the left-hand side, you have me as a first grader with a black guy that can't really see that. Going to prom with my wife, I currently have, and um, family there in the in the center. So with anything, it's really simple to, to look at maturity as from, you know, born to the, I guess you don't wanna say really death, but at, at the end, you know, as, as you, move along. So, so who am I? So you heard the introduction. So I was at Iowa DOT for 30 years. Uh, I transitioned over to Geo Decisions um, back in February. So there's my email address. You can also find information at Geo Decisions and you can also catch me on Twitter and LinkedIn um, if you need to get a hold of me. So let's talk about a maturity model. What is it? It's really just a measurement, you know, of an organization to look at its improvement over time. In our case, we're talking about GIS or geospatial. I know our title is dealing with transportation, but these philosophies can still work um, in any other types of discipline that we'll get into a little bit later. So maturity is judged as about how well you do as an organization. Um, the higher maturity, uh, the better improvements, uh, either in quality or use of resources, and maturity models generally, you know, assess things like people and culture, processes, um, an easy way to view, you know, where you're at and identify opportunities to, to um, improve. And also it can help you identify places where you were improved and are actually sliding down. So there's different categories that come into this, like there's undisciplined, uh, reactive, proactive, governed, like an undisciplined is like a think local, act local, reactive, think global, act global. Uh, local proactive, you're thinking globally, but then you're kind of acting collectively and then governs kind of the, the top end of the of the um, spectrum there. And I put a, a couple of pictures in there of a phone. So the phones have matured over time, right? You start with real basic, you know, back on landline, you went to your first cell phone and then people using different types of phones now. So technology matures. So in Slim Jim model, there are five different levels in that model. So you have an ad hoc. It means people really within your organization are working as an individual basis. They're working, their look, their scope is really looking what they do and not really looking at the enterprise as a whole. You have planned early stage, which is really looking at your department, how your department does things, but you still have blinders on to the um, other areas of the organization. Partially implemented means you're starting to cross these boundaries. Enterprise, you're really starting to think fully across the enterprise and then optimized, you know, it means you're running just like a tuned, a tuned engine or car going down the road. But with each level that you have out there, it becomes harder and harder to get to. So for example, let's say you find you're deficient in training, right? You need to have some type of training plan in your organization to get you to the next level. Well, that training plan may involve some budget you don't have or other types of resources needed. Um, or And so it makes it harder to get to that next level because you need that budget in order to to do those training plans. Or you may have a GIS manager that's lower in the in the organization that doesn't have the authority to move up or to really influence decisions for the for the organization. So that position eventually needs to be elevated. Sometimes it's hard, especially in government, to get positions reclassified. And then there's also likelihood, right? So how likely are these these factors going to improve or not improve? And so when you do the maturity model in Slim Jim, you can, as you go through each question in there, you can not just rate where you're at, uh, you could also um, rate the likelihood of, of things changing. Is it extremely likely gonna change over the next year? Is it unlikely to change? You can use those out there. So five is easier to influence as you see here and one takes more planning and resources. So let me give you another example about how, you know, you can look at maturity. So I gave you the first slide that we had of, of me maturing over time, right? So another one is, you know, how do you draw an owl? So when you first learn how to draw an owl, you just you just say, draw two circles, right? And the next thing you have is, is that owl right there. Easy enough, right? But I tried to draw that same owl and this is what I got. So as you see, it's not quite as nice as the other owl. So what does it take 
to make those steps. Maybe I need some training in there. How do I mature my artistic ability um, to move things forward? So hopefully between the really bad pictures of me at the beginning and seeing this owl and how the owl is really kind of will resonate with what a maturity model is going from circles to a nice owl. Where, how do you move up that, that chain? Well, what is a maturity model again? Maturity models have sections to measure culture, you know, sustainability, process orientation, you know. Um, sections have questions that are scored with steps and, and each question then gets a score for each section. You see in that little um, diagram right there, uh, Slim Jim has um, six different areas that you can, you can score in and e each of these areas has multiple questions. So you can see an example of, of how you can start scoring um, within your organization. So next I'm gonna pass it over to Paul and Paul, I'm gonna run your slides, right? Sure, you can leave the, this slide up for a sec. Okay. So what, what's interesting with this one is uh, you'll notice, you know, organizational structure and leadership is, is the first category. So there's a bunch of factors in there. And then the bottom one, six, is foundational data and technologies. And so the maturity model is designed to drill deep through organization and look broadly across each level. And so you get a whole um, picture of what's happening there. So, okay. We're going to get in a little bit more. So again, here's my maturity curve and you can see a devolution and over time. And so I was pretty serious when I was young, but uh, now I'm at a state where that's kind of how things are. That's my Esri vendor and he has to smile and put up with my shenanigans. And so um, that's it. This is me in my evolution. So I'm Paul Giroux. Uh, my background is IT, but heavily on the GIS side. And you'll notice that there's uh, information to get to uh, Twitter, uh, my email's there. So if you wanna take a screen cap of this, that's great, or a picture with your phone is fine, and you'll be able to get a hold of me. There's also the Creative Commons model, which is what we're talking about today, shared for everyone, and that's at slimgym.info. And there's also a community and strategy, uh, approach to strategy that a group of us are working on, and I'll introduce that briefly, but we're here mostly to talk about um, the important stuff, which is how do you leverage a maturity model to actually help give you the insights you need to drive your business forward. And we appreciate tweets, so like Eric said. Okay, history. What you see on the right is my thesis. Um, how I got there, basically, in 2012, I was tasked to uh, kind of stand up enterprise GIS in IT for a large organization and to get ready for asset management. And I was really struggling with, uh, you know, we were standing up servers, we had the data in place, everything was happening, but we just could not get quality data. And I knew it had to do with workflow, people process more than it had to do with data and technology. And so to deal with that stress of that situation, I decided to finish my master of science. And what I did is I came up with a framework to essentially help me measure the organizational impact on data quality. And I would, would be able to measure from the database all the way up to senior leadership to see what the issues were in the organization. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the first part, which is how do you measure your organizational health? And so on the right is essentially um, just a cover to the thesis and that's why it's shared. It's, it's just my academic work that's growing. So 2015, I put it on the internet, um, not knowing if anyone would ever download and it kind of took seed in Iowa. That's why Eric's here helping me sell a message with Mark. And it kind of grew from the DOTs and Mid Americas and out and there's uh, took a foothold in Southern Ontario to Canada. And now we're at a stage where we're continuing to release um, different versions of it and improvement, okay? Slide driver, nice job. So here we're, we're here to talk about a branch of that. So it's basically, I'm gonna demystify what this whole maturity model thing is. It's a spreadsheet, that's it. A simple spreadsheet has factors listed, okay? Mark's gonna get deep into Slim Jim T and how that came about, but essentially, you know, around 2018, um, Slim Jim T came out and I was able to actually take the work that that peer exchange did to really improve the model. So I'm improving this base model at the top uh, while it, you know, the transportation version continues on. And here's an example. And so Mark will talk about this, but 
um, we're, we can compare, you know, with the results we have a, the state pilot is it's actually more than just a spreadsheet. You can actually visualize it so you can take advantage of that. Okay. So now I want to talk a little bit about another branch. So we have the base model that's been out there and we're about to release five. Um, Slim Jim T is moving on and today, hopefully a bunch of you will grab it and, and use it. Um, but we've been working since 2016 on how do you actually use the results to drive strategy? How do you leverage those metrics to actually design your improvement initiative? And so in 2016, I had done one locally here where, I'm, where I live. And then in 2017, a proof of concept. Um, go ahead, Eric. By 2018, we're actually trying to actually implement a prototype. Like, what is a strategy? We we're trying to come up with a standard way to build strategy from assessment model. So, working with the city of Brampton and Salt Lake County at the time, we're able to create something that seven other organizations now are involved in, and we're we're really using those. Um, the results of the maturity model and the performance that it actually lays out for you when you go through this exercise to drive some strategy, to drive some roadmaps. And so that's where we're at on that branch. And there's the organizations that are involved at the moment. So St. Louis County, Salt Lake Municipal Services District, Ireland Planning and Local Gov, Hamilton, Agriculture Canada, um, Peel Region, Brampton. And so there's a bunch of people and we're trying to do more with assessment. So hopefully you get some tips today on what to do with that. Okay, so what is my role here, right? So I'm mentioning all these websites and we're talking about Slim Jim. And what is Slim Jim? It's just Slim is pragmatic and Jim is geographic information management. So what's what's in this for me? me? What really got me started was contribution to the profession. So with GISP, when I first I went to get my certification, you had to do all these contributions and I'm like, this is a really good way to, to do this. And because it took seed in Iowa, I had to keep watering it, right? So I blame Iowa for all of this. Um, <laughs> so my role in this is to continue to improve the base model. So the base model is 52 or 51 factors in six categories. Slim Jim T's 42 and, or 40, I think 42 and, and five categories. So my goal is to continue improving the base model for everyone share creative commons, share my improvements and knowledge with uh, the Slim Jim T peer exchange, uh, Eric Abrams at Geo Decisions, obviously, all of you on, on the line um, and anyone else who's interested in learning about how you use uh, maturity to move your organization forward and to mature. So not in like my picture, you wanna actually go the other way, uh, get a little bit more serious <laughs> about your geospatial program. And then finally, there's a method. So. We're learning how to do some really neat stuff with data-driven strategy, and we want to be able to share that with a broader audience over time, okay? Hey, Paul, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. So, Slim Jim, you said it was just a spreadsheet. So, is there a cost to that spreadsheet? Uh, no, there's no cost. It's uh, I share it as Excel, but I'm really pushing the Google uh, Sheets version of it just because of versioning and stuff. And we'll, we'll give you a little glimpse of that after. So it's no cost and Creative Commons is a license. So it's not like a, a GitHub project. What it is, is it's just a license level that says attribution, share alike, right? On derivative. Um, the Slim Jim T is share alike, do whatever you want with it essentially, right? As long as you uh, give attribution to the core group. And so there's a whole bunch of people that, and Mark will, will mm -hmm. talk about that now, I think. Okay, okay. thanks. Thanks, Paul, Eric. Um, let me uh, share my screen. We're going to switch over. I'm and stopping. Think... There we go. Is it showing? Are we seeing? No. Here we go. Let's try this. Just let me know if you see. Looks like it's up. Yep. Okay. And I'll just put it in presenter mode. And you see just the slide. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So uh, again, my name is Mark Sarmiento. I work at the Federal Highway Administration. And um, like was mentioned earlier, a lot of what I do is capacity building focused on GIS. And what that means is helping state DOTs use GIS better. So what I'm going to talk about is really, uh, you know, from the perspective of the state DOTs, how did they decide that they needed to use a capability maturity model? 
especially one that's geared towards GIS. But um, before I get into that, you saw about Paul, about Eric, this is about me. Um, yes, I'm pretty much the same, just bigger. We'll go on to more meaty information. Um, so, uh, you know, how did state DOTs decide that they needed to use a GIS capability maturity model? Well, they wanted to do things better. The work that state DOTs do obviously are focused on the highways and roads within the state, and many, many of them have found uh, how big a role, how important, how beneficial GIS is in helping them do their job. And so GIS has been shown to help organizations, state DOTs be more efficient in making basically the decisions that they that they have to make. Um, but a lot of the GIS professionals at the state DOT level, uh, especially, um, they have a lot of experience in GIS, but they're dealing with the real world um, situation of an organization that's been around for a while. And so these GIS professionals feel like, well, you know, we're using GIS at a certain level, but we could be doing so much more with it. They see the potential. Um, they see what an ideal application of GIS is. And and uh, a lot of the reason why there is a gap between where they are now with how they're using GIS and data and where they'd like to be is because they don't have enough resources. They don't have the people, they don't have the money um, to get them to that ideal state. Um, so they find themselves here, you know, this is a, you know, old paper map. Uh, this is what the, a lot of, you know, in the beginning of the implementation of GIS, a lot of them were just making paper maps from it. Uh, but they're realizing now that uh, there's a lot of t new technology that's available out there and they're trying to get to this sort of ideal state of, you know, for one example, using GIS in the cloud. And again, you know, they need money and resources, uh, people to, to help them get there. So again, state DOTs, if they want to do a better job of, of you know, what they do, they, and and they realize and understand how important the GIS is is in helping them do that, they need to use GIS better. And so, how do they get better? Well, again, they have to understand what is their goal, what are they, where do they want to be, what's the ideal state. If in a perfect world you're implementing GIS, what is that? And and then that way, once you define that, you can compare yourself to where you are with that ideal state and in doing so, you'll identify where you're doing well in your strengths, um, especially given the current resources that you may have. And you're also identifying weak areas, weaknesses, where you're not optimally using, taking advantage of the technology and data, and these are focus areas to, to improve. So then again, how, how, do you, how do you get the resources you need to, to get better? You have to be able to, to tell people to, to get um, your managers, executive level people to see that you need these resources to help the agency do better. And, and often the more successful ones have been the ones that can express what those needs are. And so to do express what those needs are, you got to be, again, go back to that previous bullet. You have to know where you'd like to be, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. Um, and then in doing so, if, you know, if you have a better understanding of who you are and where you'd like to be, then, um, you'll be more effective in, in making the case for getting the resources you need. And, it, and I realize this is all very general, but it is basic. Um, it, this, this helps at least a lot of agencies understand that a basic, uh, what they basically need to do without even getting into the details of the technology. So, you know, again, if you're like here in the middle and paper maps and you used to be on the left side, you know, you, you've got to figure a way, how do you get to to the right side, that optimal ideal state of how you're using GIS, and you need a ruler. You need you need a way to measure yourself. So um, when when I'm helping out state DOTs use GIS better, uh, some of the ways we do get an understanding of where they are is using surveys. And we found that there were a lot of state DOTs that wanted to take advantage of tools. They wanted to learn what their peers were doing. What or what other similar organizations? What are they doing to um, get the resources they need? And many state DOTs saw that, you know, they were doing several of these uh, examples here. Some were doing benefit cost analyses on justifying why they need GIS. Some were doing return on investment studies. Others were looking at the organization uh, at that level and doing assessments. And and some were like Iowa were using capability maturity models. And um, more often than not, the 
first two bullets, benefit cost analyses and, and return on investment studies, they, those were initially at a project level. At a, so at a state DOT, there is a highway project that's coming through and they need to take advantage of technology, IT technology to, to help them with that. So uh, more often than not, they would kind of blend in, uh, bring in you know, the need for the better data, data collection um, using GIS, other geospatial tools to help them do that. When we look at our organizational assessments and capability maturity models, you're starting to look at the agency organizational level. So again, me being in the federal government where I'm here to help, uh, what did we do at Federal Highway? Um, we, we looked at how we could kind of um, take advantage of existing work that was going on out there. Um, let me go ahead and get to this slide here. We, we, uh, we did, we sponsored several case study reports and peer exchanges where we brought people, we identified the activities that state DOTs were doing to help them use GIS better and benefit from it. And we would bring these people together at peer exchanges where they could actually talk to each other, learn from each other, share their experiences, identify common obstacles that they had to overcome. And, you know, these, the bullets that you see here were all the questions that we would ask them. How are state DOTs making a business case for GIS? How are they assessing themselves? What tools they use? And asking that question led to um, capability maturity models. Uh, we took those, um, certainly the case study reports, but really the peer exchanges where they were able to network and talk with each other. We documented those uh, uh, meetings and we sponsored pilot studies where we actually had DOTs go through um, some of these tools and we pulled them all together uh, in, into a working group, the states that were involved in the peer exchanges room and reports. And um, so speaking of reports, these are these are links to the reports that we actually did. We looked at how organizations were assessing themselves and, at a peer exchange. So there's a summary report for that. Uh, we, we test, there are other capability, GIS capability maturity models out there. There's one from URISA, which is the Urban Regional Information Systems Association, which is a uh, organization of GIS um, professionals at mostly at the local level, but URISA is the one that puts out the, the GISP and, and makes up the, helps define the standards for that. We had a couple states test out that, that, that model, it's a very intense model, a lot of questions. And so uh, a lot of states had issues going through that. Um, we did another peer exchange looking specifically at capability maturity models. And that's where we learned about what Iowa was doing with the Slim Jim T uh, or actually Slim Jim capability maturity model. And so then we got a group of states to try out Slim Jim you know, let them try it out, see what their experience was like, and document that. And um, these were the states that were involved in the peer exchanges and case study reports. The states that are bolded, underlined with an asterisk, they essentially form the core of this capability maturity model working group. And uh, we would talk about how can we take Slim Jim and, and make it more appropriate for a state DOT. And, Essentially, that's how Slim Jim T came about. We took, we look mostly at, mainly at the questions um, that, because these questions are geared towards, they're helping you assess what your organization is like. And uh, we adapted those to make them more appropriate for a state DOT. And then we added a dash T to Slim Jim to kind of make it uh, identify that this is more for a state DOT. But everything else within the tool itself is pretty much the same. The um, pilot study that we did and the uh, case study reports, they help us see a couple of um, common threads. We saw that, you know, that there were different strategies for going through the maturity model. Some organizations um, had one person fill out the, uh, um, the answer the questions and do the tool. Other organizations had a group of people come together and they would all um, go through the tool. Each person within that group would represent, um, in the case of a state DOT, they would represent a specific bureau or office within that DOT. So you could have a person from pavement, you could have a person from uh, maintenance, construction, another person from planning. They would all come together and try to, to kind of assess what their organization 
um, how their organization measured in within the tool within the maturity model. And then there were others that did this sort of hybrid approach where um, we would contact one person with the state DOT, but then they would give uh, representatives from different offices uh, the model, the, the tool, each of them would individually fill it out and then they would come together and try to come to consens consensus on uh, one set of answers for the, for the agency. And just from, so, so there were different strategy strategies for going through the model. There were certainly immediate benefits from the pilot states. They saw that they, if the tool helped them identify successes or, you know, their strong areas and then that helped them identify issue areas. It definitely helped them give them the language they need to talk with their executives to help them get the resources that they need. It helped communicate, help them communi communicate in a more quantitative way. They could say, we, we need, uh, we're, we're scoring low in this model in, again, like the training area. So that's why we need resources for this. We need more money to help provide better training so that people use GIS better to help the organization do their job better. Um, and then also just bringing people, especially the ones that did it in a group, whether it was a one group or a hybrid group, um, and help them bring people together and actually start the conversation, start that collaboration between different offices, between different parts of uh, the state DOT. So that was a that was a good uh, first step for them to on the path towards a more enterprise approach. Uh, one of the things that came out from these pilot studies was that the these states they wanted to be able to compare themselves with their peers to understand, you know, if their peers scored well in an area, they wanted to know what their peer did to get to that score. What, it, how, you know, why did they get that score, and how are they doing things differently from us, and and how can we benefit from that? How, you know, what ideas can we take from them on? You know different policies they may have or maybe they have access access to different technologies or they have a great training program and that's you know we want to be able to to use that in some way so so that was all um you know um one of the one of the um things that these states these pilot states wanted to um, um be able to do with the tool so to help with that um the that working group, we got together and we decided, you know, we should do a couple, we should let people know about the Slim Jim T uh, maturity model, the tool. And we did that through some uh, three webinars last fall. And then the goal was to, since we reached out to state DOTs and introduced the model, we then told them th that the, uh, um, the GIST Symposium State Survey, which helps support the annual conference that Ash, Ashto has for their uh, GIST, that survey, the questions for the survey would come from Slim Jim T. So we replaced the survey questions that are typically there with Slim Jim T questions. And part of that was to, to get them to answer the questions and sort of really get them on the road to using a maturity model. Um, then the then the goal was to uh, invite state DOTs to do the survey. We had about 30, 38 states actually go through and do the survey, answer those questions in the survey, and then uh, surreptitiously answer quite Slim Jim T questions. And then we were going to um, share that back out to the states and then also be able to have this sort of national level measure of how states um, are implementing GIS. Right now, we're at July uh, 2020, and uh, because the conference uh, was supposed to take place in um, April, it was canceled because of the, um, uh, the pandemic, and and so we're we're a little bit delayed in that. But we were able to get quite a few states to to do the tool and get them on that road to um, benefiting from that. And and certainly one of the things that we want to do is, uh, uh, as Paul mentioned earlier, some of the things that we found in the state experience, state DOT experience. He's been able to use in the, the further developing Slim Jim itself, um, but um, we certainly are working closely with, with Paul and and following the development of that. So, so what I've been trying to talk to you about um, is how these organizations, how state DOTs, uh, just get to the path decided to use capability maturity models. They wanted to work better, and they know that using GIS helps them do that. So if they're using GIS to help them work better, they got to use GIS better. And how do you do that? You need to understand where you are with the implementation of GIS and how it's used in the agency. Um, so some places use different tools. They 
use benefit cost analyses, uh, return on investment, uh, and, and capability maturity models. And, and, and part of using those tools is help them express their needs in, in a more effective way. Um, and part of that, you know, and being effective in communicating is to understand uh, where you want to be, where you want to go, uh, so that you can identify your strong areas, certainly, but definitely your, your weak areas. And certainly, especially in the pilot case study, once you, you're doing the test, doing the, uh, not test, but the maturity model the first time uh, is good, but it's it's about progress, it's process, so it's ongoing and you want to be able to measure yourself periodically. So if you measure low in one area and you do, um, and you score a certain place, then you know where to, you, you can do some things to, to help you improve. And then certainly, um, you know, sharing experience and knowledge uh, with your peers and certainly getting better. So all of these, these last couple of bullets, are uh, what Slim GMT uh, tries to accomplish. And certainly if you uh, do that, then you're winning. So um, I guess at this point, I'll turn it over back to Eric, who will talk about using maturity to develop strategy. Hey, thanks, Mark. That hey. was great. Let me go ahead and share my control here. Okay. I'm going to share. Okay. So, all right. So we've got some overviews of things. So now let's kind of dive into use maturity to develop strategy. And then after that, we'll have some, some good discussion. Let's jump right into it here. So, so your path to maturity, right? So, what you want to do when you when you download this is is take an assessment on your own. You know, go ahead and take that and look at it, but be careful not to bias your scores by looking at just what you do. Look at your look at your organization and start scoring it through the lens of your your organization. You know, take an honest look at it. You know, and let it help you. Um, guide where you're going and then engage with others. So like Mark, Mark mentioned in the transportation side, there's 30, what was it? 30 some states, 38 states that, that took this, it, you know, start comparing, you know, your results with these other states. You can find out what other states are doing good or what other people have, have done bad or how they've improved and, and to help you mature along the way. So it's really easy to do, download it and um, start taking it yourself. And then, then we'll move on to, like I mentioned, download. So, Paul, you want to jump in on some of these? Yeah, sure. So, we're not going to give you a live demo today. Um, but basically, when you go to the website, slimgym.info, um, there's the base Slim Gym model. So, 5.0 is coming out now. I'd, I'd discourage you from downloading now because I have a form on it um, asking for your information. The Slim Gym T, you go right into basically a Google shared folder. And so from there, I encourage you to use Google Sheets. So if you have a Google account, you literally, once you open that sheet, uh, it's view only mode. So you just make a copy. And, and the secret sauce to all of this is the maturity model is your starting point. So some people will go through, even your risks, they'll measure their assessment, right? And that's where they think it ends, but it's not, it's a spreadsheet. So add columns and filter and slice and really get a feel for it. Like Eric said, like try it yourself first and don't worry about you know making multiple copies. Um, the other good thing about sheets, so back here, sorry, this is this is what okay, it looks should like. Should I go back? No, that's fine. Should I go I, back? I, okay, I okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought I got a cue from you. <laughs> no, not this time. I'll kick you. You might feel okay. like under the table. <laughs> okay, so essentially what we've done is all maturity models, you know, they rate from one to four. We do a one to five model. I added a field likelihood. So if you use another model, even your risk says likelihood is really important. So for instance, you know, this one that's highlighted right now, the mature load too, the likelihoods to improve that factor, you're going to mark it as low. And this is where the, the, the magic is, is, is the question why. So it's going to give you some insight. So it says here, GIS resource allocation is the actual factor. The maturity is low but it's not likely to improve. And so you can actually start addressing what the real challenges are in the organization instead of like, oh, they're not letting me buy stuff. Well, what's really happening here? What is it a leadership issue? Is it an awareness issue? Anyways, there's a bunch of tips on how to measure on uh, medium.com there, so, okay. And once you have the sheet, there's a results tab. 
Okay, and the first two columns is essentially to put the baseline. So take your previous assessment and put it in. If this is your first time through it, I tell everyone just kind of go back in time, like hot tub time machine, go back a year, right? And and estimate what your values were a year ago, and now you have performance moving forward. So what's neat here is you just basically once you've done an assessment, you just copy from this results tab on C and D, and you can paste values only into the first two, and now you're done. So it's fill out a spreadsheet. If you've done it, you know year after year, you just copy paste your values, and then you're off to the races. Hey Paul, as you're filling in your values, can you overthink this um, when you're doing a score well, for your value? I think it's it's. Sometimes it's interpretation of the, what the question is. And so, okay. you know, you had mentioned, like, look at the whole organization. So when I designed the Slim Jim model, it was meant for someone to come out and look down through the organization. So literally, I don't work there. I'm looking at everything from the top of the food chain all the way down to, you know, the people doing the data. So the, it's the interpretation of the questions. I've left them sufficiently ambiguous to allow you as a leader and manager to use this raw materials the way you want, right? So the recipe for your maturity, you're gonna come up with things. I'm not gonna, you know, the, the model doesn't tell you exactly what recipe you're gonna make. Anyhow, oh yeah. Okay. I'm thinking about food right now, it's lunch and <laughs> <laughs> And here's the reason why I push uh, the Google version is there's versioning, there's all sorts of neat little tricks in there. And so if you do mess up the sheet, uh, one thing I do commonly is, you know, you do a sort and you forget to expand selection. And all of a sudden now everything's out of whack. You can go back in time and I've done that a few times. So that's a little tip for you. Yep. Great. You, Eric, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll go ahead and, and take it from here. So the path to maturity, as Paula mentioned, going back a year. So when, when I first um, was introduced to this model, I guess right after you did your your masters right there Paul. So I went back and I went back and looked at the year that I became uh, the GIS leader at Iowa DOT 2004. And I I said what since I've been around so long, let me go way back in the hot tub time machine here to 2004 and and estimate where we were at. That way I can measure the progress from you know, the stone age, you know, up to modern day. So if you've been around a long time, you know, step back in time and um, see where you have been. And the whole point of doing this is really just to, to see your improvements and be able to communicate those improvements or needs to, to management. So by not maturing in your organization, so a lot of, and you can look at your organization right now, and when you don't mature and don't have a path to mature, you get things like, you know, Business units find alternate solutions. You know, what happens is people start going rogue because they can't get the enterprise um, software, enterprise things they need. So they'll go and start using access databases, this and that, uh, back in the day, Fox Pro, stuff like that. Uh, you don't have standards. Limited web mapping applications are managed and controlled by the wrong people. So people look at geospatial as a technology. It is a technology, but it's also a philosophy, right? You get ad hoc data access, and what happens is you really get stuck in a desktop environment, and you really can't um, leverage WebGIS without being mature. Eric? Yes. On your last slide, you're talking about going way back in time. Yep. And really, that's, I mean, that's the approach. You know, if you download it today and, and use it as a tool just to give you better insights, as you go forward in time, right, continue to do that because GIS is transformational and it's a long game. And so you're going to see over time how your health is improving um, or not improving, depending on on the on your assessment. So yeah, yep. going back what in was interesting about can. yeah, what was interesting about doing that was you can see where you're at and I kind of created a timeline and kind of worked my way up. But then as you did it over multiple years, we actually found some metrics that we started going backwards on because we we're focusing so much on one area that we started neglecting another. So some benefits to um, becoming mature, right? You start getting policies related to open data. You get authoritative data now. You know, those these are things that you can identify in this maturity model. Things like federated logins start coming in to make it easy for people to access um, data, you know? And then a lot of things really start rolling out because people have their roles defined. You have vision, direction, 
uh, stuff like that. On the integration side, IT staff has evolved and dedicated to GIS um, processes and stuff like that. Um, open web services, and then the Canadian, Paul, our Canadian friend, didn't know what a McDLT was, and probably a lot of the younger people don't know what it is. But it was, but it was really just keeping the hot stuff hot and the cold stuff cold, right? And you know, it was a failure for McDonald's. And you know, don't be a McDLT in your organization. Let Slim Jim help you integrate these things together all at one time. Last thing I want to do is have to put my own sandwich together, right? And create more trash for the la landfill. So, yeah. and, and, and on then that, on, oh. on that point, what's really interesting is that um, the maturity model of disambiguate what enterprise looks like it is. And right now there's so much convergence of technology, IT, OT, right, big data, all of that. That stuff that the geospatial people have, have been living since the 60s, right? And so what it does is it actually puts shape on what we actually do. And it helps like with it, what Eric said about the desktop GIS. It can pull you out of there and said and explain to you um, what the future looks like, right? And how to get there. So very good. And then sustainability, right? So it's like the, the picture there is really a reference to if the empire and the rebellion could just get along, right? Everything would be good. And the, of course, I had to throw a mascot in the middle for the university in the town I'm in. That's actually my son in that mascot outfit. Um, that's part of the family thing. So, so once you get sustainability, right, you get data editing embedded workflows. So you don't have to edit your GIS stuff over here and then you have a separate application for other quote business data. You know, you can start investing in specialization of staff because you have direction. You can invest in things like a training plan and really start educating um, your workforce about um, GIS and becomes business integration, right? Also becoming mature, you get budget software and people, you know, you start making software easy. The last thing you want is to have software and then nobody can use it because you have policies that say only only X gets this software, or Y gets this software, right? So as you can just kind of read there, high maturity breaks through distrust between offices and staff. You hope that as you start getting mature that you can start having these relationships. <clears throat> Another thing for benefits of being mature is um, budget uh, and software, right? You got single core, Oh, I'm sorry, I already talked about that. But at the very bottom, uh, I threw everyone for a loop yesterday in our practice run with the Ron Popeil's pocket fisherman. And you know, which type of fishing pole do you wanna be, right? Do you wanna be the very bottom fishing pole, the Ron Popeil that has the wrist strap is actually optional, or do you wanna be a deep sea fisherman? That's a mature fisherman, someone that's probably started with the pocket fisherman, realized they liked it, found how to improve along the way. So hopefully this ties in, Mark's laughing there. Hopefully this ties into the owl too, right? So people will remember this forever because they'll say pocket fisherman, deep sea fisherman, maturity model, right? So, all right. So, and closing on this part, um, look at history, right? So you wanna look at the history of the organization for maturity, you know, look at your current Slim Jim maturity and, and uh, match that up. Do the assessment every year. Do you think, Paul, every year is a good time frame to do an assessment, or do you do it more frequently or less frequently? I mean, ideally, you would do more often, but you need a certain level of maturity where you can actually, you know, get this stuff moving rapidly. And so most organizations, a year is sufficient. Okay. And then opportunities um, and develop a plan to maintain and grow elements each year. So really look at those ones that are deficient, the ones that are likely, you can likely improve, right? So work on those, like the diagram shows, you have your improvement program, pick the things you can do, and then put those out over the, the future years to, to move forward. All yeah, right. The, the little squares oh. were like, what's in my head? Those, those are factors, right? And so if you actually know, here's the factors, that it, it, you can really make it tangible instead of like strategy of some abstract thing. It's like, here's the factors, and. And this is what we're going to do moving forward. And you can always check, uh, check back on them. Okay. Okay. So let's kind of move into a discussion uh, component here. So let's talk about our first question, right? What is enterprise? So what is it? Yeah, this, this question came up during the uh, pilot state studies that I talked about earlier, where um, the states, it's the first time they went, they've gone through uh, GIS capability maturity model, and there were some question on, okay, what level should we be answering this? Because 
who uh, whoever's um, filling out the um, the tool, answering the questions, that often uh, kind of presents some bias on on their on the results of it. And a lot of there was a lot of discussion within the working group of helping define what they meant by enterprise. And um, part of it, uh, I think, you know, on the next slide, Paul's gets to it's it's a continuous pursuit. But it, it, I think it also ties into what I was talking about earlier. That um, you know, enterprise. I think of when I think enterprise, I think the whole agency, the whole organization. And so, when you're trying to answer the questions in in the tool, and and this is what we talked about a lot, you're trying to answer those questions. You got to have that that perspective because that's what you're trying to get to. Um, at least that's that's what I saw. Paul, did you have anything? Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. It's a whole health approach to things, and so enterprise is the pursuit of what that whole health is. So. You know, Mark Mark runs uh, marathon <laughs> and stuff, and so for me, I'm not going to just sign up for a marathon. I haven't actually left this house in like three months or something, and so how do I get there? And and what's that pursuit? So how do I set the goals? And what are the things I have to put mm -hmm. in place? And it's very similar. It, it's a health approach to things. So, um, but it is a very confusing word because people think enterprise because an enterprise license agreement with Esri or enterprise server, or they think it's a it's a thing. And in yeah. this case, it's not. It's it's a it's a pursuit, and you're trying to chase level four. I don't think anybody will get to level four. You'll have factors that'll get there, but it's if you just average across all your factors, and when you do that, you're always going to have something pulling back on you. And so, you know, it's it's tough mm -hmm. to get to the stage where you're running marathons like you, Mark. So how do <laughs> well, you? So I was going to. Mark had mentioned something about you know there's some confusion on enterprise, and so if you're filling out. You know the slim gym model how do you how do you decide which things you're measuring are important like in a transportation department you got a linear referencing system generally right so does that have more weight when you're looking at it as a as a quote enterprise perspective um does that have more weight than somebody just going out and collecting uh kestrel boxes or birdhouses out there on the on the network i mean how, how do you how do you weigh that yeah yeah that's a challenge uh I think um, uh, I think what helps is though it's clear who who answered that question, who's doing it, so that you get you understand uh, you know the perspective that that person has. But uh, I think that was one of the other things too is when you're actually bringing a group together, and you have different answers for the same questions, that helps. That starts you on that process of getting better as an organization, and and that's one of the nice things about it. A maturity model or a tool similar to it is that it kind of facilitates that the beginning of a of uh, enterprise approach to to that. But uh, certainly, everyone's going to think their data set that they're responsible for is important, that, and that's why they need all the resources, they need the money, and people to help support them. That and and yeah, if you're in your um, stovepipe or your little bubble and that's your DLT you make the if you're on the cold side you know you're gonna stay <laughs> cold and you like it like that that's fine but then when you need to when you need to work with the rest of the agency when you need to work with your partners then that's when you actually have to um, um, get to you know agree maybe not so much agreement but consensus on in direction and that's 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 harder that's challenging. Yeah, and and Slim Jim T is designed to look at that. Like, how well is everybody collaborating? Like, is it innovative? Does senior leadership get it? Are they supporting it? Right? Are people involved in in managing the data properly as across silos? Like, there literally has has some of those about how do you get rid of the McDLT in your organization yep. so you're mature. Do we have time to keep going, or should we do questions now? What do you think? Yeah, thanks, Paul. I was just going to hop in to say um, that I do think we need to pause here to let yep. the participants ask some questions. So just as a reminder, everybody, if you haven't already, to type your questions into the Q&A window there that's available and uh, not the chat or the private message. So let me throw this one out there first. How long does it fill, take to fill out Slim Jim or Slim Jim T? Eric, you well, do your perspective and then I'll, I'll do my perspective it. since yeah. since I'm an old fogey, right? Even though the three of us are the same age, right? I look like <laughs> 10 years older. Mark looks like he's still 16. But anyway, um, so since I had kind of a pulse on everything going on in the department, it was fairly easy to, to fill it out. I'd say time-wise, it probably took about an hour to, to fill it out. And then the harder part was once you fill it out was – 
you know, taking that to your leadership and, and, and really identifying which one of these you should go after next in order to improve it. So I'd say for an experienced person that really understands their agency and can look at it as a whole, about an hour to, to go through it. Yeah, and for me, you know, if you, if you hired Eric and GeoDecisions, for instance, to walk you through it, because it's good to have someone that actually knows how to interpret the questions. Um, that discussion, every every factor is discussed, gives a, a whole bunch of insight into what your enterprise is going to look like. But that one takes a lot longer, so you can you can do that probably in about four hours to get get guided through that. But that's, that's a good the, point. The yeah. Yeah, because I would go through those things in my head. I'd be like, oh, is this really this? Is it that? And then when you just do it yourself, you know, you also bias it a little bit too. And that's why it's good mm -hmm. to have somebody guide you through it if, if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I use, it, I use it to guide me through my day job too, right? And so it, it'll take me 20 minutes. Yeah, just because I know, because I'm trying every day I'm thinking about the, the factors. All right. So what do you see, Mark? Um, yeah, it, you know, obviously, you know, the more serious, the more, more time you take with it, because you, you really want to get the result, the uh, benefit of using the tool, then you'll spend more time, certainly a person doing it by themselves. It's much faster than, and, but, it, and it, but the value is when you start working with other people, sharing the results and getting to something for the organization. Um, did you get any input from the 38 states on like, how long was it burdensome for them to fill this out, and submit it to you? The, well, you know what? Actually, not not really. Um, that was the challenge <laughs> when we didn't have the conference. I wasn't able to really interact with them, so we didn't get any complaints. It wasn't certainly any longer. The number of questions wasn't any longer than than the previous version of the survey. But uh, and and you know, I've gone through it. You know, for my <laughs> that's the irony is that Federal Highway and USDOT were certainly behind many state duties in terms of actually implementing GIS. And uh, uh, but it, but using the tool itself, answering those questions, uh, uh, doesn't take too long. It's not intensive. It's it's being honest, uh, how you respond, and being aware and being able to answer it faithfully. I guess. Right. Yeah, and that's why so, I, I strongly recommend you get someone to guide, like someone that's been through it, or someone who's actually built, spent a lot of time in an organization trying to build an enterprise level of maturity. Like Eric, for instance, is. It's good to have your peers guide you through it because um, it's gonna, mm -hmm. you know, we can do but we can play devil's advocate and actually ask you the hard questions, like, well, you know, is is your leadership really understanding it for even though you marked it high stuff like that? So, okay, I think I think uh, Eric, if you could just get to that slide, the three challenges, that's a good one to kind of oh, yeah. sort of finish up on because uh, um, Paul was just getting to that the sort of three challenges that you may have. Yeah, so I'm seeing this commonly a lot across most organizations. So basically, the three main challenges are, are like uh, the mythical Cerberus that's guarding the gates to Hades, and this is got this is guarding your status quo. And so essentially, it's leadership. So are they aware, and do they get what they can actually do to transform in their organization with this technology and workforce uh, issues, and then. Um, legacy divisions, and so a lot of people think IT really get data and integrations, but not necessarily, and they especially don't understand the geospatial world, right? So those are things that will drag you back into the status quo, and you have to deal with those challenges. So we have one now. I don't know if there's time for more. So do we have time for one more question? Sure. Um, since we started to talk about the state's response to this, um, Mark, I'm going to feed this one to you. I think what were the results of the GIST survey of states? Were they receptive or were there any comments that you could share that you think would be beneficial for the group? I think, um, well, like I said earlier, uh, one of the hopes was in getting the states to do the survey was to um, to get together at the at the conference. And so that so that's been a challenge getting real input from from uh, from the the states that did the, the survey. Um, but just sort of an initial, uh, you know, having looked at the responses, uh, the 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 states, you know, just a quick national picture, um, because there were, uh, you know, you, you, what we had in the end was this this classic bell curve. We had enough enough responses where a lot of the a lot of the countries at this sort of level of level of three in 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 terms of the maturity model and implementing GIS and and um, and so I think. 
you know, I think that gave us some idea. And but it's really it, when you look at that one score, that gives you an idea. But it's re the value I think is looking at the responses at the individual questions. Um, uh, that's where you can really identify where, um, uh, you know, where you can improve, and then identify based on that what things you you need and what you what things you need to do to help you get better to get a better score. The number itself is just a. I, I find that the number is just part of the picture. It's really the individual responses to each of the questions and then the fact that you're getting different people from different parts of your organization to talk to each other. That That is, I think, the most value uh, because and, a lot of these states, this is new new to them and being able to, to, to express themselves using this tool, that's that's a big help already. Paul, did you yeah, want Those to links you provided before, Mark, um, so some of the case studies and stuff, there's some good feedback in there too, right? So yeah, if, you, yeah. if anybody wants to really dig in is, is get to Mark's links and, and you'll get the actual feedback from each of the DOTs on, on what happened mm -hmm. there. So. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thanks, and that, um, unfortunately, that's about all we have time for today. So I'm gonna call it there, but uh, for those of you who are participating to receive a PDH or GISP credit, you'll receive a follow-up email in the coming weeks with those certificates. We hope you can join us for next week's webinar about using data in design. And if you have ideas for additional topics or are interested in co-presenting with one of our subject matter experts, please email us at insights at gfnet.com. That's insights at gfnet.com. And now on behalf of the entire Geo Decisions and Gana Fleming team, Mark, Eric, and Paul, I wanna thank you for joining us and we hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Right, Thanks thank for you. the opportunity.